In a sample of gases, you have a great distribution of speeds. You have some particles moving very rapidly, and some particles moving very slowly, and a lot of particles moving in the middle. Now, we used the mean squared velocity in our expressions for the kinetic energy and the pressure in a sample of gas. But what does that distribution of speeds look like? Well, it looks something like if you took the distribution of grades on a midterm in a large class, for instance. You'd have some at very high grade, some with a low grade, and in the middle, near the average, lots of people with a, a grade. So if we plot the number of particles with a given speed versus speed, we get a distribution of the speeds in the gas. And that distribution of speeds is called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. It follows a specific functional form. We're not interested in the exact functional form here, but we do want to look at the shapes of these curves. So here's a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that follows a specific form for a gas at, say, a low temperature or a high molar mass. High molar mass or low temperature would mean relatively low velocities and lots of particles with these low velocities. Still some particles with very high velocities and some particles with very low velocities. These curves asymptotically approach zero velocity. So even out here at very high velocity, there's a probability of ha finding gas particles moving very rapidly, even in a low temperature sample. Now, let's look at a different sample. Same number of particles, but either at a higher temperature or a lower molar mass. We know higher temperature or lower molar mass would increase the mean squared velocity, that root mean squared velocity parameter. And that's what happens. These two samples have the same number of particles, but as you warm them or as you go to a lower mass, the distribution shifts. So you'll have a still greater number of particles here at relatively higher velocities. Now, where does the root mean square velocity fall on these plots? It actually falls just to the side of the most probable velocity. The most probable velocity would be the peak of the curve. That would be the greatest number of particles have this velocity, the peak of these two curves. The root mean squared velocity falls here, and we'll use the position of the root mean square velocity and the overall shape of these curves to predict things about samples of gases.